the headlines. Bandits kidnap unspecified number of commuters in Katsina. President Mahmoud Buhari says he will support only candidates fielded by the APC in the forthcoming elections. Nigeria's energy transition plan to gulp 172.8 trillion naira. And on the foreign scene, early election results put Angola's ruling party in the lead. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. And now the details. Bandits reportedly blocked the Katsana Jibia Road on Wednesday and kidnapped an unspecified number of commuters. The bandits, who came on six motorcycles at around 5 p.m., were said to have occupied the road and fired gunshots to scare commuters before they kidnapped the occupants of two vehicles. Lately, the Katsana Jibia Road has been frequented by bandits despite multiple security checkpoints and military barracks along the road. Meanwhile, police spokesman in the state, SP Gambo Isa, could not be reached for confirmation at the time of filing this report. And the federal government says it cannot resume the Abuja Kaduna train service for now because it will be insensitive to the plight of families whose loved ones are still in captivity. Minister of Transportation Moazu Sambu disclosed this to State House correspondents after the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari at the State House, Abuja. The transport minister, who was addressing questions on the suspension of the service following the March 28th train attack, noted that the government is still investigating the right time of surveillance equipment to procure in order to effectively monitor the tracks along the Abuja-Kaduna route, as well as concessioning it in a public-private partnership arrangement. Meanwhile, the Federal Executive Council has approved 1.49 billion naira for repair works to be carried out at the Nigeria Railway Corporation. One person has been reportedly killed following a disagreement between two communities during a football match in Nukai within Ardokola, local government area of Taraba State. Police spokesman in the state, Abdullahi Usman, while confirming the incident, said the divisional police officer of Ardokola local council was also not spared as he was pelted with stones, which led to the breaking of his head as well as other officers when they made efforts to restore peace. Several others were said to have also been injured, with some receiving treatment at various health facilities in the area. Usman said arrests have been made and an investigation into the incident has been fully launched. President Muhammadu Buhari on Wednesday said he will not support candidates of other political parties against those of his party, the All Progressives Congress. According to a statement by presidential spokesman Garba Shehu, the president assured that he would continue to support the party at all levels to enforce discipline, synchronization and coordination. The statement by the president follows increasing insinuations that some stalwarts of the ruling party would support the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, against Asiwaju Bola Ahmad Tinubu, his APC counterpart. President Buhari also directed officials in and around the presidential villa and all those engaging in loose talks to shun controversial statements that may hurt the party and the government. And still talking politics, the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, has denied any move to collapse the party's structure with other political parties. The national chairman of the party, Rufai Al Ali, said the party is not ready to surrender its legitimacy as a duly registered political party to any other party. Al Ali, who spoke with newsmen in Lagos, was responding to speculations that the supporters of its presidential candidate and national leader, Rabi Ukwankwasu, were in talks with the candidates of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The NMPP chairman said the room for mergers among political parties had already closed, citing the rules and guidelines for the 2023 elections released by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Speaking on the recent defection of former Kano State Governor Ibrahim Shekaro from the party, Al Ghali said the party respects his decision 
but will not be dragged into any controversy. And ahead of the 2023 general elections, Governor Abdullahi Suli of Nasrallah State has appealed for unity among party members in the state. Suli made the call on Wednesday in Lafia while receiving the report of the Reconciliation Committee set up to address the grievances of members at the recent party primaries in the state. He commended the aggrieved persons for appearing and tabling their issues before the committee and promised to do his best towards implementing the recommendations of the committee to ensure victory for the party in 2023. Earlier, Chairman of the committee, Hassan Liman, expressed gratitude to the governor for giving them the opportunity to serve the state and the party. From there, so it is our own responsibility to be able to keep the flag flying. We can come and meet it and then kill it along the way. It will not be our dream, and our dream is actually to take it from here to the, that next level. And we are one of the few states actually that have gotten to the stage where we are at the moment. There are so many states that are still finding one problem or the other and have not even found ways to be able to get to where we are. Once again, we thank you. It is an honor, it is a privilege to work for our great party under the leadership of your excellency, the leader of our party in the national state. We want to assure you that this our great party, the by the interaction, by what we have done with our elders and critical stakeholders in this state, believe that in 2023, our party, the great APC, will win election at the lock, at the House of Assembly, at the governorship, at the House of Representatives, and at the Senate. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, on Wednesday launched digital gadgets to aid its strategic disaster communication system. NEMA Director General Mustafa Ahmed, who launched High Terror Radios, said the introduction of strategic communication technologies was to enhance effective communication among team players. He listed the new strategic communication frameworks as digital push to talk over cellular and broadband communication infrastructure and high terror devices. Ahmed said the launch was the first phase and all the agency's offices nationwide will be covered. He said the 160 available radios will be deployed across the agency's offices. The Gombe State Government has vowed to provide plots of land to the victims of flood in Bajoga, Funakai local government. In early August 2022, flood destroyed over 100 houses in Bajuga town, rendering hundreds of people homeless. A three-year-old child died and many others were wounded. To have a special information, geospatial information of all our locations, so that uh, they can advise. And uh, linking them with the local government means the needful will be done and uh, there will be a proper layout where we'll take care of all the social needs of the people. And again, we'll have prohibition for them to build houses. And government will give every support in that regard so that at, 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 at long last, at least our people will be living harmoniously and peacefully. And now for a look at the environment where over 2,000 trees are to be planted across the Waikin Kudu local government area of Kano State as part of efforts to prevent desert encroachment across the state. Flagging off the exercise, the district head of Dawaikin Kudu, Jahur Usman, harped on the need for all to adopt the statewide tree planting campaign in order to prevent the effects of climate change in Kano. Trust TV correspondent Idris Jibra reports. Organized by a non-governmental organization, Panacea Foundation, with the support of Federal Ministry of Environment and other stakeholders, this tree planting campaign is to further sensitize communities across Dawaikin Kudu local government on the importance of tree planting to protect the environment owing to the global effect of climate change. 
It will not just uh, prevent desert encroachment, it will also uh, contribute to so many aspects of human endeavor. Uh, but back to the desert encroachment, we have neighborhoods that are, are very close to the desert areas, maybe areas around that bordering some part of Jigawa, you know, so uh, we're trying to establish a shelter bed around those places. According to the district head of Dawa Kenkudu, tree planting at a time like this is very necessary especially now that flood disaster has ravaged many villages and towns across Dawakin Kudu local government, while assuring his continuous commitment towards sensitizing residents on the need to embrace the exercise across his district. It is very important for you to take up this campaign in all the emirates across Kano State. You can start by looking at uh, doctors to inform the people about the benefit of these trees because some trees are medicinal, some are even food. Meanwhile, the Panacea Foundation confirmed that tree planting campaign is going round the 44 local government areas of Kano State and that no place will be left until the environment is fully protected. Before we go on site to plant, we, we do assess every place. For example, uh, the commitment of the uh, communities, then the protection gears, uh, is it a basket or this stone or even mosquito net, or is the place uh, uh, fenced? So if it is fenced, we don't have any uh, problem in planting the trees. While this exercise is flag of in Dawa Kudu, it is however expected that cutting down trees and bush burning across many parts of Kanu State will also be prevented. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. You're watching Trust TV News Update. And still to come on the news, how local maize flour gains popularity. Details of this and more after the break. Please stay with us. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now let's recap our top stories. Bandits kidnap an unspecified number of commuters in Katsuna. 
And President Mahmoud Buhari says he will support only candidates fielded by the APC in the forthcoming elections. And in other news, Kogi State Judiciary has uncovered 268 ghost workers on the payroll of the State High Court. The chairman of the Staff Verification Committee, Justice Mohammed Etsu Umar, disclosed this on Wednesday while presenting the report to the acting Chief Judge Justice Josiah Joe in Lokoja. Justice Umar said the malpractice had led to an astronomical increase in personnel emoluments, representing a 40% increase in personnel costs. The committee also recommended the termination of all illegal appointments into the services of the Kogi State Judiciary between January 2021 and June 2022. In his remarks, the CJ said the assignment would be a continuous exercise to ensure due process and diligence in staff recruitment and administration. He promised to implement the recommendations of the committee without delay. And despite concerns on Nigeria's large debt profile in recent times, President Muhammadu Buhari has so far been able to offset about 1 trillion naira of public debt owed to state governments. Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Fashola, explained to newsmen at the State House Abuja that the debts were run up by states which constructed federal roads before the life of the current administration. He said the Federal Executive Council at its Wednesday meeting approved contracts for the construction of some major roads in five northeastern states. Kende Amodu reports. The Northeast Development Commission was the biggest beneficiary from the reign of contract approvals at this week's meeting of the Cabinet. Five roads in the Northeast have been penciled down for reconstruction. This is in line with the mandate of the Commission established in 2017 to coordinate the resettlement, rehabilitation, integration and reconstruction of infrastructure in the region that is worst hit by the Boko Haram insurgency. And all these roads are being taken into consideration and selected in conjunction with the state governments and other critical stakeholders. Uh, these roads are expected to stimulate uh, economic activities, enhance security, and facilitate the freer movement of goods and people in these uh, affected states. Meanwhile, the federal government has offset about 1 trillion naira public debt incurred by state governments. These are interventions made on federal roads previously before the life of the Buhari administration. So this is also part of the national debt. So the process of payment requires the Ministry of Finance subsequent to this approval now to go to the National Assembly to get approval to raise debt to secure payment to the states. Um, I think it's important to note that when we're having conversations about the national debt, these are some of the components that were inherited debts that this government is also paying for infrastructure. There are indications that the Abuja Light Rail Service will soon begin operations. The rail inaugurated by President Buhari in July 2018 and open to passengers has since been abandoned but it just got approval for a contract to provide security services for the entire 45 kilometers of the track within the federal capital city. And these security services are meant to protect the key infrastructure on the rail tracks, the signaling and communication equipment, as well as the electrical system. Now, just how soon the Abuja light rail will resume is not certain, as some repairs may have to be made to vandalized portions of the track. From State House Abuja, Kende Amudu, Trust TV News. Now, as the struggles by families to afford three square meals heighten, local maize flour has flooded markets across Katana State. The maize flour, popularly known as Garin Kilo, is used in preparing tuo masara, which is easy to make. Trust TV's Abdullahi Ahmadi visited some spots where this popular corn flour is being processed and sold. Necessity, they say, is the mother of invention. 
Maize flour is now a lucrative business in many towns and cities in the northern part of Nigeria, especially in Kazma State. Apart from its availability, maize flour is affordable, easy to make, and it saves time. Families prefer to patronize this ready-made flour as it is a shortcut of cooking, a satisfying meal for the family without any fuss. While you have the time to quickly process the food and then to process the raw material is the food. Or like when you go and buy the maize, you have to process it. It takes a long time and uh, you are alleviating the difficulties to your family. They don't have to process all, all through. And the cost difference isn't much. It's even cheaper, better, more efficient just by the processed one. Observers said production of this maize flour has also increased the value chain of the business as more people are involved before it gets to the end user. A lot of people are making money with this business. You can see people from Molin, grinding to milling, and sales of the flour, everyone is making money. The prices of the corn flour differ depending on the quality and quantity required by the buyer. However, in this market, there are three categories of the flour. The Damfuntua, which is of high quality, Dankatana, a step lower, and the ordinary, which is of the lowest of all. What is amazing is that each category tastes different when prepared. No, no, How much is the cost of this flour, sir? It is of three to four categories. There is the one processed in Funtua, which is the best. It costs 350 naira per kilo. There is also the one processed in Katsana, and the ordinary one, which costs 300 and 250 respectively. Traders are, however, making a brisk business here, being a popular meal and affordable, and is eaten by almost every family. With the projection of imminent hunger by the World Bank, people are calling on relevant authorities to check the rate at which inflation is raking the already fragile economy of the nation. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Host Television News, Katana. And now to Nasra State, where security agencies and other stakeholders in the security sector have again been charged to put more effort towards tackling criminal activities in the country. Nasra State Governor Abdullahi Suleh gave the charge while distributing operational vehicles to security agencies, community and traditional leaders in the state. Abu Bakr Abdullahi, who sent the report from Lafia, says the governor charged the benefiting agencies and leaders to make judicious use of the vehicles. The report is presented from our studio. Following the recent Kuji jailbreak in the Federal Capital Territory, public and private schools were closed to prevent possible attack in any of the school or facilities in the state. With the schools yet to reopen, Government, in collaboration with security agencies and relevant stakeholders, is taking measures to improve security across the state. Distributing the operational vehicles as part of the measures, Nasarawa State Governor Abdullahi Sule said although security agencies and other stakeholders have been doing their best in the area of safeguarding life. They say precaution is better than kill. And that is the reason why we continue to make various efforts. Recently, if you remember, when we were told about a possible attack by some criminals, we decided to shut down our schools. Governor Sule recommended security agencies and stakeholders for the successes recorded in the security sector, said security is everyone's responsibility and assured that the state will do more to guarantee the safety of all. We also want to use the opportunity to thank our service chiefs, community leaders, our religious leaders, our traditional rulers, and the good people of Nasarawa State for the collective effort that we have had for us to be considered one of the safest states in the country. While appreciating the governor for the gesture, Nasarawa State Commissioner of Police, Adeshino Shoyemi, represented by DSP Usman Nadada, assured that security agencies would continue to work towards making the state among the safest in the country. 
We want to thank His Excellency for the continuous support they have been given to the security agencies and other government services that are assisting us towards securing the state. I want to assure His Excellency that this assistance given to the security agencies would be used judicially. At the event, 42 vehicles were distributed, bringing the total number so far distributed since the inception of the current administration to 129. And in order to carry out Nigeria's energy transition strategy, the World Bank and the U.S. Export-Import Bank, Exim Bank, have pledged over $3 billion. The commitment was made by the international organizations on Wednesday at the official launch of the Energy Transition Plan by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. The World Bank's country director for Nigeria, Shubab Choudhury, stated that the organization aims to contribute more than $1.5 billion to the country's energy transition plan. Oshimbanjo stated that Nigeria's energy transformation would require huge investment, including spending $410 billion by 2060. He said Nigeria has established an interministerial working group to implement the energy transition, and it is currently negotiating with partners to secure an, an, an initial $10 billion support package ahead of COP27. And on the international scene, provisional results from Angola's election indicate the ruling party has been, that has been in power for nearly five decades holds a strong lead over the main opposition. With 33% of the votes counted on Thursday, the National Electoral Commission, CNE, said the first provincial results showed the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola, MPLA, garnered 60.65% of the vote. The MPLA has, led, has been led since 2017 by President João Lourenço. Since independence from Portugal in 1975, Angola has been run by the MPLA. Meanwhile, the Opposition National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA, which is led by Alberto Costa Jr., dismissed the provincial results and said the party would publish its own based on a parallel vote count using the same data as the CNE. The election was widely seen as the country's most competitive in decades. And that wraps up Trust TV News update for this hour. For more news, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.